Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Welcome to Chris is Talking, and this is my weekly manga review for One Piece, and this is for chapter 826. And we get introduced to two of Sanji's siblings, Sanji's older sister, who is dubbed double oh zero triple zero whatever triple zero and we also get introduced to sanji's younger brother double oh four now triple oh zero is just basically just meaning zero and sanji's younger brother is number four sun is three so sanji and then yon is another way, way of saying four because t is the way that they don't like saying it so yon's a replacement so yonji sanji were missing the first and the second and ray uh reiji is another way of saying zero so We've got zero, three, and four. One and two are elsewhere, and it has been stated that because they're a royalty, there's a high chance that they could actually be on their way to the um, rivery, or they could be on the ship somewhere because that ship was massive. It was literally a giant Den Den Mushi, which is also very interesting because um, Brooke explains to Straw Hats about how the technological advanced. Um, Sorry, that's my watch. And <laughs> how the technological advanced uh, team, uh, assassins or group, I don't know what to call them because there's a lot of them. They're huge. And um, Brooke even tells them that at one point they were, they had full control and power over the North Blue. So that shows how much influence that they have in the One Piece universe. But as a universe, well, in the One Piece verse. So yeah, like the German six are oh, really serious. I never way that showed how powerful they are in this verse is the fact that when Sanji's face got officially let out on the wanted posters, they were actually able to change Sanji's poster from a wanted dead or alive to just alive. And we've seen that even though celestial dragons are able to be on the wanted posters, so they need to have an extremely intense influence to the world government as well as um, the Marines. So that's some about the German 66. Um, we also see that because they're technological advanced people, um, Yonji had like when he got hit by Reiju or onto the water, he was floating. At first, when I was reading it, I thought that he was doing a skywalk kind of thing, but then I realized he wasn't walking. He was literally just standing there. So it might have been some like thrusters, kind of like an Iron Man thing, or like, um, or on his hand as well, he had like a gauntlet, which looked like an iron fist. But Brooke said that um, the German 66 were whatever the North Blue with an iron fist. So all these kind of things that need uh, lead to lead me to believe that they have a crazy amount of technology maybe not as big as vegapunk because we were literally told a while ago that vegapunk is the pinnacle of the technological world in one piece so um but they must be really up there especially as their ship is in the same shape as a denden mushi so this could either be saying that they were one of the first original creators of denden mushi and the one who um wholesaled it around the whole world so then people could do that because if they have that kind of power that kind of level influence of technology Who's to say like they did? So, yeah, we uh, this chapter lets us know a bit about them, but not too much, whilst giving us a lot of exposition about who they are, where they, like where they came from, what kind of sort of power they have, and why they're after certain things and what they're doing. So, I really like the chapter for that. As well as that, we also get to see a bit of their powers. Now, we never saw Yonji's power really, we just saw him kind of like more floating and stuff, so that's more his technology, his technology. But we did get to see Reiju um, perform her poison sucking ability. So I don't know if that's an ability or whether that's a devil fruit. Sanji is able to go on fire, and that's not a devil fruit, that's actually just his ability. So, and they've shown that it's actual fire. When Sanji goes on fire, he literally goes on fire. So I'm thinking. The fact that because she could suck up the poison out of um, Luffy, is this a devil fruit ability or is it something like in Hunter x Hunter where Killer was able to um, take in all the poison and like he wasn't affected? But the level that she did it at was quite intense, especially the fact that Luffy is meant to be immune to poison. So I think Luffy is meant to be the level of immunity that Killua is in Hunter, but her level is actually almost a power. So I'm interested to see more about that. I love that. Yonji and Reiju, their personalities are literally still pervy, just like Sanji. So does this mean that the whole um, Binspoke family are just a bunch of pervs? Because that would be hilarious getting to see the older father, well, not the older, the father of the Binspokes and you're seeing proper serious, just like Yonji, but then suddenly snapping and having some pervy moments. Talking about Yonji, Yonji, even at the end of the chapter, like 
when he well not in the chapter first he sees Nami and his eyes do the whole Sanji thing and for a split moment he looked exactly like Sanji and I found that hilarious but then at the end of the chapter you see Yonji with Nami's poster and he's just holding it looking at it in the background in like secretion so I thought that was that was really really funny um Luffy's back Luffy's back because poison got sucked out of him by Reiju um as well as that was this Luffy's first kiss it could have been Luffy's first kiss. He was oblivious to it all. For who he he woke up like, well, what happened? I was just there eating food, and suddenly I was asleep. Like, what was going on? Like, man, that skin was amazing. So <laughs> Nami's like, don't even go there. Don't even go there with that skin. That's hilarious. Now, so we got Luffy back. Um, Brooke explains the bit of information he knows about the German Six Six and Vince McMahon family. So I'm glad that's been clarified a bit. It's not like there was a huge uh, influence to him and his death and his crewmates and stuff so there wasn't no crazy backstory which i thought was going to happen but it was good enough um we find out that the vince Merck are royalty ish and they're allowed to go to the reverie that's pretty cool we found out the powers which is really nice we also at the end of the chapter how can i forget we also find out that this fisherman at the end is actually speaking to jimbei so jimbei is coming back into this arc which about time we've been waiting for him for a very long time literally if he wasn't coming now people would have probably forgotten about Jinbei later on so um maybe this fish man's asking Jinbei for like uh, orders or whether he should attack or whether he should let them through or like should he help them so it's interesting to see Jinbei's um, relationship to this other fish man and what Jinbei's up to now because back in the day in Fishman Island arc Jinbei was actually quite OP. He never really did any crazy fighting because he let Luffy deal with his own situations but Jinbei was one of the stronger uh, fishmen especially as he knew the fishman karate and haki and everything like that so Jinbei is actually quite OP. So yeah this is a really amazing chapter so much happened I'm really interested to see where this is going where are we going to go next um why Big Mom wants to connect with the with Vince Smoke family in German 66 what is their connection their correlation um characterization was really really good uh, plot, the story, uh, everything, yeah, this is a really, really good chapter, it's been a really good uh, week for chapter, manga chapter reviews this week, and I'm really happy about that, can't wait for 827, I'm interested to see where that goes, and whether we're going to go straight in with the whole Jinbei thing, or whether we're going to take a step back, and then follow maybe uh, Zoro and what they're up to, especially as we were given so much information. And not like an information overload, but in a way of like, all right, we've been given, given a bit of information. It, would be, it wouldn't be that bad if we took a pause and went to go see what uh, Kinemon and Sanji and what they were up to. So yeah, if you like this review, do like, share, subscribe. As you know, I'm really thankful every single time you guys do that. Um, I've gone to like 240 now from two weeks ago. I had 23 subscribers. So you guys have been amazing. Thank you very much for supporting my work. And um, I do have playlists for all my other anime manga reviews as well, as well as my video blogs and just general videos. Yeah. Apart from that, thank you very much for watching this and do subscribe. Chris is talking. Peace.